Hey, it's Marco from Craft Coffee Spot. The Gaja Classic Pro and the Breville Bambino Plus are two of the most popular espresso machines at the $500 price point. I have been hesitant to review the Gaja Classic on this channel up until recently when they redesigned it as the Gaja Evo Classic, where now they have changed the pump pressure to 9 bars right at the box. And I think that makes this model a lot more competitive with the Breville Bambino Plus. And so I want to have a nuanced discussion of the different features here, and I think what you like will really depend on your own personal preferences. So let's start talking about the designs, as these two look very different. The Bambino Plus has a stainless steel exterior, nice rounded corners, and I like that it's got this brightly lit display right in the front. Meanwhile, the Gaja Classic Pro has actually been out for over 30 years and hasn't changed that much in that time, but I think it looks great. I have the new matte blue color, and I love the look of this. Now that said, the functionality of this design is maybe a little outdated for this decade. Uh, the water tank is tucked behind this drip tray. The drip tray itself is a little blocky, and you have to fill up the water tank on top of the machine. The interface is really simple. You want to turn the machine on and off, the middle one to start and stop brewing, and then the one on the far right is to turn on the steam one temperature. It's all manual. Another thing too is you'll notice there's not that much cup clearance here underneath the brew head. Also, the Gaja Classic Pro accessories are a little limiting. It comes with this stock spouted portafilter, which actually has a really nice head to it, nice heavy head, but the, the handle is plastic and a little flimsy. It feels pretty uneven. Also, it comes with this plastic tamper that to me is, is pretty much unworkable. I feel like you're going to be upgrading both of these, especially because the spouts on this are going to really limit the space when you're brewing espresso. Meanwhile, the Bambino Plus also comes with the somewhat simple plastic portafilter here that I think a lot of people argue you need to upgrade to, but I think the tamper and the portafilter are more than usable on the Bambino Plus. So now let's talk about the espresso you can get with each machine, which is where this review gets really nuanced because there are a lot of differences on the internals here and the espresso they produce. Now the biggest is that the Gaja Classic Pro uses a boiler heating system, while the Bambino Plus uses a thermal coil. Now, Boilers are generally preferred over thermal coils because you can just have a lot more stable temperature with it. The way I describe it is you got to think of a boiler as like heating a pot of water and that pot of water is going to hold its temperature better than just running water over a hot piece of metal, which is essentially what a thermal coil does. Now the difference here is that the Gaja Classic does not have a PID and that PID is really what manages the temperature swings. So the Bambino Plus has both a PID and a pre-infusion. And what you'll notice with the Gaja Classic is if you leave it on for too long, it'll get really hot. After about five minutes, let alone 10 minutes, when you run water, it'll come out boiling almost right away. And so you essentially have to leave it on for a while to get to the stable temperature, but then purge a little bit of water to cool it off and wait a little bit for it to reheat to the optimal temperature. And a lot of people hate this manual temperature surfing process on the Gaja Classic Pro. Personally, I think the concerns are a little overblown, I think anyone who's watching this video is smart enough to figure it out. My process is I turn on the Gaja Classic, I let it heat up for five minutes, and then I purge some water for about five to 10 seconds. I actually use that water to preheat the portafilter, which is always necessary, and then I stop it. I grind and prepare my puck as per normal, and then by the time I'm ready, the Gaja Classic is at the optimal temperature, and it ends up being pretty consistent for me. And what I like about the Gaja Classic Pro is that it does produce better espresso than the Bambino Plus. And I think a big reason is that boiler and also the 58mm portafilter versus the Breville, which is a 54mm portafilter. Furnishing on that slightly wider diameter of the portafilter, it just gives a little bit more surface area for the water to spread out and more evenly extract the coffee. Also, I found that I can grind finer with the Gaja Classic Pro. Pretty much always like one full setting finer with that 58 millimeter portafilter. And that just pretty much always increases your extraction and will just bump your flavor profile. I find I get a little bit of a brighter and fuller tasting espresso on the Gaja Classic. Now, a big thing here is that it has to do with this Gaja Evo upgrade. The fact that it runs at nine bars is a big improvement. For this model, I was running at 12 bars and it was not nearly as consistent. It was a lot harder to use. So I think that Evo change to nine bars does make a lot more forgiving and amenable for most people. Now to be clear, the Bambino Plus makes good espresso. I still really like this. And I think that has to do with the PID and the pre-infusion that actually do a quite a good job. 
But I think really what stands out about the Bambino Plus on the espresso brewing is just the ease of use. For starters, the Bambino Plus starts in three seconds, and that's a function of the newer thermal coil design, the Thermojet, which is also more temperature stable. Also, we have these one and two cup brewing buttons in the front that you can pre-program, so you can also have a consistent dose. Remember, the Gaja Classic, it's all manual brewing, and you only have four inches of cup clearance here, so it gets really tight for a cup, and you're going to need a scale with manual brewing. The Bambino Plus, you don't have to worry about that. You can program it as you like, and you can kind of reuse those settings. And then there is just more cup clearance here. So overall, the Bambino Plus is a lot easier to use. I feel like the quality is maybe 85%, to even 90% of what you can get on the Gaja Classic, but with a lot less work. And some people argue it's even better because you're just more consistent. And I will make one caveat on the Bambino Plus, and that's although it starts really quickly, you absolutely need to preheat the brew head here. Make sure you run a blink shot and run some water through your portafilter for at least 10 to 15 seconds or it will not get hot enough. So let's talk about frothing milk with both of these machines. So the Bambino Plus has an automatic steam one. So you'll see that there's this temperature sensor here in the base and that regulates the frothing temperature and texture. And you'll see that there's three settings right here for temperature and texture. And all you need to do is fill up your milk jug, put it underneath the wand on that temperature sensor and the machine does the rest. Now I have found it is quite consistent but I have been a little mixed on the Bambino Plus milk frothing. And my criticism is that I don't find there's enough range of settings. I almost always use the lowest temperature and the lowest texture. Otherwise, it gets too hot and too thick. Also, this wand self-cleans, which is nice. But the self-cleaning is a little aggressive. It sprays a lot of water out. And you're going to fill up this trip tray on the Bambino Plus pretty quickly. Now, one thing you can do with the Bambino Plus that's nice is you can just lift up the wand and you can actually do a manual milk steaming with it. And it takes less than a minute, it's pretty quick, and even though it's at one position, it works quite well. On the other hand, the Gaja Classic Pro has this manual steam wand right here, and I do think you can produce a much creamier, kind of thinner microphone with the Gaja Classic Pro. And that comes down to the boiler. You can turn on the steam position here, and if you wait maybe a minute or two, it'll get really hot. I mean, not even two minutes, it's like one minute. And you can get a really powerful and dry steam from this wand. And so I've actually made some of the best latte art ever with the Gaja Classic Pro. Now that said, it is harder to use. You can see this wand does not rotate much. It's pretty close to the machine, so it's a little hard to get your jug underneath it. And then the steam wand tip on this has two holes that face in different directions, which makes it hard to create a nice vortex and get a good aeration and stretching of your milk. Frankly, I didn't get good results with the Gaja Classic until I actually swapped out the steam wand tip with the smaller one-hole tip. So yet another small upgrade, and I'll link the steam wand tip below. So again, it kind of comes down to this trade-off of potentially higher peak quality on the Gaja Classic versus ease of use on the Bambino Plus. I think on the milk frothing department, everyone is going to go towards the Bambino Plus here just for that automatic steam wand. Now, this is a good point to interject and bring up the Breville Bambino, the Bambino regular here. If you're not that into lattes or cappuccinos, you might want to consider that Breville Bambino, which is the same as the Bambino Plus, but it has a manual steam wand. It also costs a few hundred dollars less, so it's a really nice bargain compared to either of these machines. Now, speaking of value, both these machines cost about the same at the time of this filming. But on the Gaja, you are going to spend more on accessory upgrades right out of the box. Now, that said, the Gaja Classic will last a lot longer. This model has been out for over 30 years, and there are machines that are over 20 years old that are running just fine. The internals on here are a lot simpler, which make them a lot easier to repair. Also, the new Gaja Evo has a coating on the inside of the boiler that raises scale. So you're already going to be descaling this a lot less, which also reduces your maintenance, and you get it repaired more. So actually, I think the Gaja Classic Pro is a better lifetime value than the Bambino Plus. So as you can tell, the theme of this discussion was that there's a trade-off between quality on the Gaja Classic Pro and ease of use on the Breville Bambino Plus. I think it depends on what you like, and I think a lot of home baristas are happy to trade off some quality for a lot more ease of use. Like I said, I think the Bambino Plus is made 85 to 90% of the quality of the Gaja and half the work at most. So I think if you're unsure of what to decide, I would just go with a Bambino Plus because it should be a lot easier to use. 
But if you have some experience with espresso or you plan to be using this for a very long time, I would get the Gaja Classic Pro. If you pair this with a good espresso grinder, the potential you can get over time is a lot higher than the Bambino Plus. And also, if you're looking for maybe just a bargain, consider the Bremel Bambino, which is personally my favorite out of all three of the options that I talked about. Now, I will link all this in the description below, along with the accessory upgrades, so you can find those there. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'm happy to answer them. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider hitting like, as it really supports this channel, and subscribe to see our future videos.